In this video, I'm going to talk to you about uncertainty with a specific focus on estimating uncertainty in measurements. So we've established in the previous video that when you have a measurement, uh, you need certain bits of information. So you need the magnitude, an error or uncertainty and the units. And uh, that's because measurements are inexact. Um, and so without these three bits of information, uh, a measurement is not really very useful. OK, so next we want to ask the question, how can we actually quantify the uncertainty in our measurements? So there are two approaches. There's a type A evaluation and there's a type B evaluation. And they have slight, they have different approaches in the way that we evaluate the uncertainty of our measurements for each. So we'll go into some more detail on each of these approaches. So for type A, we are looking at statistical methods and actually trying to process our data based on a valid statistical test. So one approach could be calculating the standard deviation for the mean of a series of independent observations. So we could take repeated measurements for the thing that we're studying. So we're trying to measure the same thing and we might do it several times, maybe 10 times. We'll take the mean as the value and we'll take the standard deviation as the uncertainty. So that's one approach. We can also use linear regression to estimate parameters that vary. So we might have a dependent variable, an independent variable and plot a graph. And then the line of best fit might tell us information from the intercept and the gradient, for example. We can then use uh, various statistical methods to get the uncertainty in those parameters. And then we could also carry out an analysis of variance to identify and quantify random effects in certain kinds of measurements. So these are three examples of, that we might use for a type A evaluation. Now, when it comes to a type B evaluation, we are basing this on scientific judgment uh, using all the information that we have to hand. So it might be based on previous measurements that we've made and the data that we've collected. Uh, it might be based on experience and general knowledge and behavior of the property of the materials and the instruments that we're using. It could be based on the manufacturer specifications. So if we're using an instrument or a scale and the manufacturer might say this is within plus or minus a certain tolerance and we could use that for our uncertainty. Uh, we can get data provided with calibration reports or other reports. And we can also have uncertainties assigned to reference data taken from handbooks. OK, so when it comes to reading a digital scale, we can think about the uncertainty and we take the uncertainty as plus or minus five in the next significant figure. So if we look at the example of the voltmeter on the left, the reading is 8.32. And so we have readings in the first decimal place, the second decimal place, but not in the third decimal place. That third decimal place would be the next significant figure. So we actually have plus or minus five in that third decimal place, because that third decimal place is the next significant figure over. Now this assumes that the readings are stable and not fluctuating. So that is the caveat there. So this applies to uh, more decimal places or fewer decimal places, it just depends to what level of significant figures your reading is on the scale. If we're trying to read an analog scale, then we can think about a couple of uh, factors. One of them is resolution uncertainty. So when we are reading an analog scale, the uncertainty is taken as plus or minus half the smallest readable division. So if we take for example, the thermometer shown in the photograph, we might say that the smallest readable division is one. And therefore, the reading shown here is 19 plus or minus 0.5, because 0.5 is half of the smallest readable division. Um, we might actually say, no, I think I could read that to 0.5 degrees C, 
and so my error is going to be 19 plus or minus 0.3. Now it's 0.3 here because I've rounded. So half of 0.5 is 0.25, but we would just want one significant figure in the error, so it's rounded to 0.3. Now, someone else might come along and say, no, I can read that to 0 0.1. And I think that's probably a bit too optimistic. But if they were to say that, then the error would be plus or minus 0 0.05. Now, um, the 0 0.51 may be seen as being too pessimistic. And the 0 0.05 precision or, or uncertainty might be a bit too optimistic. So it's reasonable to say perhaps that we could read this to plus or minus 0.3. But it, can, it depends on your judgment and actually deciding to what what's the smallest division that you could read this measurement to. Another type of error that we have to be mindful of when we're reading analog scales is parallax uncertainty. And this is where the observer's eye is not directly in line with the measurement marking and it can cause the reading to appear higher or lower than the actual value. So this isn't necessarily quantifying the uncertainty, but it's being aware of a source of error that you should try to avoid. So in the photograph here, we've got a photo of the thermometer reading 19 degrees, and this is being viewed directly in line with the scale. So if you can imagine a photo here with the thermometer and the eye line is directly with the level of the alcohol in the thermometer. And that will give us a reading of 19 degrees C, and that's the correct way to do this. Now, where we can get an error is if we view the scale from above or from below. And so the photo on the right hand side, it's the same thermometer at the same temperature, but now it's being viewed from above. And it appears to be giving a reading of 20 degrees, but that is incorrect. So this is a parallax error or uncertainty and it should be avoided by actually viewing the scale at the right level. Now, just a few words on uncertainties and rounding. We typically want to round the uncertainty to one significant figure. So it would be incorrect in this example where we've got a measurement of 52.3 centimetres plus or minus four. 0.1 centimetres, we'd actually want to round the 4.1 to one significant figure, so that'd be four centimetres. We also then want to round the measurement itself to the same number of decimal places. So always round the experimental measurement or result to the same decimal places and the, as the uncertainty. So step one, round your uncertainty to one significant figure. Step two, Round your measurement to the same number of decimal places. So here's another example. Um, this would be incorrect because the measurement has too many decimal places. Our uncertainty is 0 0.1. Now that's already at one significant figure. So we'd leave that as it is, but we round the measurement to 1.2 so that it has the same number of decimal places as the decimal places in the uncertainty. So that's been a video about uncertainty with a focus on estimating uncertainty. I hope you found that useful. Please remember to comment, like and subscribe and thanks very much for watching.